on the other hand, did his job. He got more than a majority, more than a majority of that 67%. That is the name of the game. I'm reading last night about the fall of France in the summer of 1940. And the general, Renault, calls up Churchill and says, it's over. Sure, he's compared Trump to Hitler, Mussolini, Saddam Hussein, and even once compared his kids to Saddam Hussein's sons, Uday and Kuse. Chris Matthews, a guy who has promoted and defended socialists for decades now, is suddenly turning his hyperbole onto Bernie Sanders. Unsurprisingly, though, there are double standards, and Chris Matthews has now been forced to apologize to Bernie Sanders. Before getting into tonight's news, I want to say something quite important and personal. As I watched the one-sided results of Saturday's Democratic caucus in Nevada, I reached for an historical analogy and used a bad one. And used a bad one. Senator Sanders, I'm sorry for comparing anything from that tragic era in which so many suffered, especially the Jewish people, to an electoral result in which you were the well-deserved winner. So damn pathetic and hypocritical. I think we're getting our first look at what it's going to look like when we get our first communist president. Have you ever seen such boot-licking groveling? Especially after going through almost four years of the press constantly comparing Donald Trump to the Nazis or communist regimes. Somehow, these dullards blame Donald Trump for plummeting trust in the media. I do have to say, though, I'm a bit surprised that they're now turning these tactics on to Bernie. Calling him a communist and a Nazi. We'll get right back to this media madness, but let me just take a quick moment to thank this channel's new sponsor, My Patriot Supply. When emergencies strike, you always see news stories of long lines of people and empty store shelves. There's no need to be a part of that chaos and the possibility of having to deal with FEMA food lines. Those that know what's coming are using today to prepare. You should make a plan too. Start by building an emergency food supply. And I trust and use My Patriot Supply. You can too. They're experts in emergency preparedness and have a guaranteed two-day delivery. Disasters won't wait. Neither should you. This week, save $70 on a two-week emergency food kit when you go to my special website, preparewithdronetech.com. My Patriot Food Supply Kits last up to 25 years in storage and include breakfasts, lunches, and dinners. Order a few today and receive a guaranteed two-day delivery discreetly to your door. Take action so you're ready for what's coming and save $70. Those that know what's coming are preparing. Go to preparewithdronetech.com preparewithdronetech.com. I think that we're going to see a lot more of this spotlight on Bernie Sanders and his support for communist regimes in the past. But the problem here is the media themselves have been promoters of communism and socialism going back for decades now. Many of the people in the media praised Fidel Castro when he died. Now, I'm working on a more detailed video on this topic, but I do want to show you a few examples of the media doing exactly what they're accusing Bernie of doing. One of the things we're hearing a lot about all of a sudden is how Bernie Sanders in the past has praised and even defended brutal communist regimes. Once saying it's unfair to simply say everything is bad, he had a massive literacy program. Well, it's not real hard to have a massive literacy program when you're mass murdering most of your population. What Bernie said there is pretty standard fare and what you'll usually hear from members of the media. They downplay the brutal regime and point to their supposedly amazing social programs. Yeah, you're living in constant in fear and you have no freedom, but at least you have free health care? Andrea Mitchell over at NBC and MSNBC is one of the worst offenders, lavishing Fidel with praise after his death. Then a declared socialist, he dramatically improved health care and literacy. I think uh, he will be revered as someone who brought education and social services and medical care to all of his people. And very, very aware of everything that was going on. Very, very smart and very wedded to his revolutionary ideology. He was a romantic figure when he came into power. And when he knocked off a corrupt dictator, Batista, we American young, young high school kids and kids in those days rooted like mad for the guy. We thought, here was this guy in a in fatigues with a beard coming in out of the countryside uh, leading a revolution and swept aside this old corrupt regime 
but it's still one of those nations where you see donkey carts because that's exactly what they'd rather have for transportation. A fun fact about Cuba's supposedly amazing literacy rate, it was actually no better than Costa Rica's at the time. And guess what? They didn't have a brutal communist dictatorship. Not only that, but these weren't even literacy programs. It was re-education camps. <laughs> By the way, that, that literacy program that he was talking about was a re-education program. Yes, it was. There's a big difference. There you go. And so Probably if you actually are a historian and look at what occurred there, there's nothing good to say about Fidel. You can't find any of these Democrats saying anything good about their own country, or Trump for that matter, but they have nothing but glowing praise for a communist dictator because he had supposedly amazing social programs. Which I guess you're going to need if you're living under constant fear of a brutal dictatorship. Hey, thanks for watching. As always, please like, share, and subscribe. It's really important. If you enjoyed this video and you agree with my mission, please consider subscribing to me on Subscribestar, Patreon, or just sending a donation on PayPal. With YouTube making it almost impossible to make money, I rely on my supporters to help keep this channel going. You can find all the links in the description and pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.